Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug if you're new here. Gonna have a quick vinyl finds update for you. Some records I've picked up recently, been listening to, you know the drill, you know the routine. A uh, couple of things to get out of the way first though. I got something in the mail from DJ Trish once again. Good friend here in the vinyl community. Thanks again Trish. Sent me a nice little note here. Got a cute little uh, drawing of herself. You're a talented, talented lady there, Trish. And she sent me, of course, some of her famous CD mixes. 2019 picks number one and number two. Great mixes, looking forward to spinning these. Uh, you know, only Trish could mix the Jonas Brothers with the Grateful Dead, with Junior Mervin, Osabisa, and on the second one, You've got uh, Katy Perry along with Kamasi Washington. Great stuff, Trish. I don't know how you do it. Thank you once again for your generosity. So, got some records to share with you guys. Uh, also, I want to thank everybody that uh, watched and commented on my recent uh, Reggae Spotlights Reloaded video where I'm kind of rebooting, relaunching my long-running series of Reggae-specific videos where I get a bit more bit more in-depth, a bit more focused on a wider range of topics. Uh, hopefully show more of my collection with you guys. Got a lot of positive feedback from that one. It was kind of a long video, kind of talky, kind of a, a broad introductory subject to tackle. So I've been very, very heartened by the, uh, the positive feedback I got and more will be coming. Just got to pull my socks up and get them done. On to some finds, a couple of thrift finds. I picked this up just a few days ago. Pat Suzuki, sorry, on the Vic label. This is uh, quite an old one, 1958, I think. Vocal jazz, kind of in that show tunes, Broadway kind of uh, kind of style. There's some songs by Hammerstein, Hoagie Carmichael, Cole Porter on here. She was uh, raised in California. Her family was uh, was interned in the uh, the relocation camps many Japanese Americans faced at the time in World War II, started their lives over again afterward. She made her way to Seattle where she was performing in uh, musical theater, in clubs and stuff. She was discovered by Bing Crosby who got her uh, into a recording contract. And uh, this I believe was her second LP. She was also appearing on stage in the Flower Drum Song. Didn't get to appear in the movie, as uh, by that time she'd gotten married, was starting a family. Her husband was actually a um, photographer for JFK, John F. Kennedy presidency. She was uh, quite, they were quite close friends with the Kennedy family. So uh, some movers and shakers, definitely. Pat Suzuki, and she kind of uh, more or less retired from the music industry after that. But uh, vocal jazz, she's definitely, you can see her, her roots are in on the stage with some kind of vampy turns on songs like Black Coffee, My Heart Belongs to Daddy, cool stuff. Pioneering Japanese American, still around today. Uh, another thrift find, and I was uh, kind of curious to come across this one. I'd never seen it before. I've seen their later albums by this artist. It is Joan Armitrading, Whatever's For Us. This is her debut album, very early 70s here. Gatefold Press on A&M Records. Um, she was basically a duo with a fellow singer-songwriter named Pam Nestor at this, part, at this point. There's the two of them together. They had met in Birmingham, UK. They both originally had origins going to the Caribbean. They met in Birmingham in a uh, stage musical presentation of the musical Hair. Uh, started working together. They were basically a duo, got signed to a record deal. The record label in the UK decided to focus on Joan as a solo artist. Didn't pick any of uh, Pam Nestor's songs for the album. Didn't pick any of the, one, the songs where she sang lead. So very much downplayed her contribution. After a couple of years, Pam Nestor kind of got disillusioned with the music business, dropped out. But I was expecting kind of singer, songwriter, folk on here. And it's actually very much in the Elton John sound of the, the period. It's actually even recorded in some of the same studios he was using, like for Honky Chateau and those kind of albums. Produced by Gus Dudgeon, Elton John's producer. And even uh, Davey Johnson from, uh, from Elton John's band appears on guitar here. Uh, what uh, what had, my, uh, had me keeping an eye out for this one was, there was a song from this LP that was compiled on this three CD compilation I picked up a while back, Dust on the Nettles, a song called Visionary Mountains, which is on this LP, which has sitar and this kind of psychedelic 
psychedelic uh, poem song, and it described this LP as acid folk, which is a bit of a stretch. It's a singer-songwriter pop in the Elton John style of the time with that kind of honky-tonk kind of piano going on, but nice to find. Uh, another thrift find, some Latin music, Perez Prado, still in shrink, nice copy on RCA Victor. Uh, this includes uh, just swinging Latin sounds. Also includes the uh, Peanut Vendor. Where is it? It's on here. The Peanut Vendor, originally written in Cuba in the 1920s, uh, was brought to Jamaica by the Scatolites. Uh, saxophonist Roland Alfonso was a, originally from Cuba, was covered in Jamaica in the early 60s, and uh, would be covered thereafter ever on. I think the most famous version is uh, Gregory Isaac's Top Ten, which the music is derived from that Cuban peanut vendor. Little known Latin influence on reggae. Uh, cheap bin find at a local record store, one of my last uh, trips down into the city. Neiman Czesla, kind of psychedelic cover there. This is Polish rock. And uh, I knew who, what this was because I thrifted this album a couple of years ago. Complete blind buy, but it looked interesting. And that's a Polish pressing. Nice uh, garage kind of rock, late 60s sound with um, blue-eyed soul, R&B influence. Lyrics all in Polish, so I can't really understand any of it. But uh, Neiman Czesla, quite well known. And his band Aquarelli, late 60s Polish rock and roll. Some more late 60s rock. Found this on my trip into the city in the New Arrivals bin. It's a 2008 reissue of an album that originally appeared in 1968. SF Sorrow by The Pretty Things. Only ever heard of this LP because of the vinyl community. I've seen it talked about, posted. Psychedelic album from the UK. The Pretty Things were a band that uh, had its roots kind of in R&B, blues-influenced rock. By the late 60s, they were going psychedelic. John Twink Alder was a member of the band at that point. I showed his album uh, Think Pink a few videos back. Uh, this has been called one of the first concept albums, if not the first, predated the Who's Tommy, and uh, with all the songs telling the story of S.F. Sorrell, a.k.a. Sebastian F. Sorrell, as it goes through his life and all the tragedies that happened to him. Kind of a, kind of a downer thematically, but um, uh, lots of psychedelic rock, lots of freak out guitar, uh, kind of Beatles-esque melodic hooks in the style of uh, their albums of the time. Cool LP from them. 2008 reissue, originally appeared on the U in the US on the Rare Earth subsidiary of Motown. Uh, picked up this 12 inch single. It is Sheila Ricards meets King Tubby, getting into a bit of reggae. It uh, originally came out as a 10-inch release a couple of years ago with a slightly different track listing. This is a very obscure song that only appeared on a uh, Canadian Various Artists compilation in the 1970s, Bunny Lee Productions. There was one song by a singer mis in classic Jamaican fashion misspelled as Shella Record. And uh, there was a song called Jamaican Fruit of African Roots with an accompanying dub version. Uh, many years later, a Toronto DJ by way, of, uh, uh, by way of Australia named Chris Flanagan found that LP for 10 cents in a thrift store, became fascinated with that song by Shella Record, and uh, embarked on a years-long quest to find out more about this obscure singer. He's actually uh, started up a record label. He named Shella Records in, uh, in uh, reference to that song reissued this 12 inch very recently. The original 10 inch release of that song goes for quite a bit of money now, but a beautiful label he designed there. Shows up, Shella Records out of Toronto. He's uh, currently on tour with a documentary film detailing his search for uh, more information about Sheila Ricard, Ricards, that he, uh, a documentary film that he completed last year, 2019. It's uh, playing in select cities and tells the story with uh, live action combined with animation, I believe. Chris Flanagan, cool guy. He's also put out a couple of seven inch single releases on the Shella Records label out of Toronto. Very rare releases. Uh, another find from my recent spin around the record sh stores in town. Showed the new album, or more recent album, by Lee Perry a couple of videos back, Rainford. This is the dub companion, just came out. 
uh, again with Adrian Sherwood of On You Sound, and this is the silver vinyl release, limited edition. Heavy dubwise renditions of the tracks from that song. Very loud, dynamic pressing on this one. Sounds great. Dub as Adrian Sherwood does it when he gets together with Lee Perry. Another mail order pickup, a recent reissue, came out last year, year before or so. This originally came out in 1979. It's the debut album by a singer called Earl Zero, Roots Reggae Classic, Only Ja Can Ease the Pressure. Earl Zero was named uh, Earl Johnson, got his, uh, his stage name Earl Zero to differentiate him from his friend Earl Chinna Smith, who is a well-known uh, reggae guitar player in uh, various uh, session bands. When he was a uh, Breaking into the music business, producer Bunny Lee gave him the name Earl Zero as uh, Earl Johnson's uh, father was a fisherman who worked out of a wharf called Zero Wharf, so Earl Zero. But uh, singer-songwriter, uh, he actually wrote a song called None Shall Escape the Judgment, recorded it for producer Bunny Lee. It's his first recording, I believe. Uh, Bunny Lee heard a very more commercial sound with another singer he had, Johnny Clark. So he got Johnny Clark to do over the song None Shall Escape the Judgment, turned into a smash hit, kicked off the flying cymbal sound, which uh, Bunny Lee took to the top of the charts. Earl Zero was left to uh, carry on as a journeyman singer-songwriter, recorded for various producers before landing at Bertram Brown's uh, Greenwich Town, Kingston, based Freedom Sounds label, which put out the songs included on this LP release. It's a reissue from Iroko Records out of France, just came out uh, very recently. Roots Reggae Classic was also released in the UK on the student label with a different title and cover, and some of the dubbed versions of these songs, they were sent to King Tubby's, where they were uh, cooked in the dub, King Tubby's dub pot, brought to a simmer and, uh, and re redefined, rehashed, brought to uh, fruition, you might say, from King Tubby. And some of those dub versions appeared on the Blood and Fire Freedom Sounds and Dub release from the 1990s. But crucial roots reggae. Earl Zero later relocated to California, where he's remained ever since. Uh, online pickup here, Dr. Elementado. I think this is around 1979. King's Bread, also known as Ja Love Forever after the best song on here. Ja Love Forever. Winston Thompson, Dr. Alimentado, perhaps best known for his LP, Best Dressed Chicken in Town, which is a very early release on the Greensleeves label out of the UK. This is a slightly later one on his Ital Sounds label. Uh, he was DJing on that Best Dressed Chicken in Town LP before switching to kind of a singing style, which he does on this album. Great Roots album of the time. I've been getting into picking up more Studio One records for my collection. Uh, this is an online pickup recently. The Heptones, originally released in 1968. This is a later pressing on the Studio One Black Ribbon label. Heptones, classic, classic album from one of the great Jamaican harmony trios, Leroy Sibbles, one of the great singers in Jamaican music, as well as an accomplished bass player. Arranged many of the classic Studio One hits. And this is uh, one of their best albums, chock full of classics. At least half the songs on this album would have to appear on a Best of the Heptones compilation. You've got Equal Rights, Pure Sorrow, Heptones Gonna Fight, uh, Party Time, uh, just straight classics. Rock Steady, Going Into Reggae, originally released 1968. One of their uh, absolute essential albums. And speaking of essential albums, uh, early in my vinyl community days, I did a spotlight, one of my probably one of my very first reggae spotlights on Dennis Brown. Uh, one of my glaring omissions from my collection was his debut album. I finally added that to the collection very recently. No Man Is an Island. This LP originally appeared around 1972. Songs recorded when he was uh, just about 13 years old. Incredibly mature voice for the time for his age, his debut album, No Man Is An Island. This is on the standard Studio One label, later pressing. Uh, great bass, bassy sound on this one. Pure classics, title track, also created by the father. Make it easy on yourself. Some of his most iconic songs. The Crown Prince of Reggae has been called. So that is what I've got for you today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. More videos to come. 
Until then, peace.